This is a short video to show you how to find and access journal articles while you are not on the university campus. On the University Library homepage, there is a search journal articles option next to the catalogue search box. However, it's often better to use your subject libguide to look for journal articles as this will show you the best places to search for articles in your subject area. If you scroll down the library homepage and click on electronic resources, you'll see that there is an option to access the subject libguides. When you click on here, you are given a list of guides that you can use. Choose the one that is nearest your subject area. All subject libguides look the same. They have the same tabs across the top, but the information on each tab differs depending on your subject area. I'm going to click on the Articles and Journals tab, and this gives you the best place in your subject area to look for journal articles. Most libguides will have Summon at the top of their guide. The only subject areas which do not have Summon at the top are the health database, the health subject areas such as nursing and midwifery. Everyone else should have Summon at the top of their guide. Summon is the library's discovery tool. So this allows you to access the majority of the library's e-journals, e-books, web resources, newspaper articles, etc. It's a bit like Google for the library. So I'm just going to start by doing a search on Summon. I'm going to look for time management. So I'm just going to type that in and click go. Summon does give you an awful lot of results. As I said, it is like Google for the library. You can see how many we've got. There are ways to narrow your results down. If you're looking for something like time management and it's two words and you want them next to each other, so you want to search as a phrase, if you put double quotation marks around that phrase and then search, it will look for those two words in that exact order. And you can see our results have already gone down a huge amount. You can also put in other words that you might be interested in searching for. So I'm interested in time management for university students. So if I then input in university, um, but I want to search for university or universities. So I can take off the Y and take that word down to its root and put an asterisk. And that will search for both word endings. The same as if I want to look for student or students, I can put student with an asterisk in and it will look for both word endings. If I just click search again, and we're now down to 60, just over 61,000 results. There are some limits down the left hand side, so you can limit your search down. I'm going to choose scholarly and peer reviewed. So a peer reviewed journal article is something that has been looked at by experts in that field, at least two experts, and they've said that it's of high quality of information. I'm also going to click on journal article because I'm only interested in bringing back journal articles in this search. I've then got publication date. You can put in um, specific dates if you want to. I'm just going to click last 12 months. Okay. So this gives us 1,628 results, which is a lot less than we started with, but still quite a lot to look through. So. I'm going to go to the second one, what makes a good study day? You'll see that down here there is a more information option. If I click on this, it gives us the abstract of the article and it tells us the journal it's from, the volume, the date, etc, the pages. It gives you a bit more information. And then I'm going to click available online. And you can see here and um, when we look at this, it looks as if we haven't got access to this journal. But that's just because it doesn't realise that I'm a member of the University of Hull at the moment. So you can either click on this Get Access button or click Sign In. And it gives you some options. One of them is signing in. Putting your university username and password in here won't do anything. It won't help. This is if you've got a, a personal account with a Science Direct. You've then got sign in by your institution. We don't use Athens at the University of Hull, we use Shibboleth. 
So I'm going to click on this other institution option. Okay, I've then got this page and it asks me to select my region or group. So when I drop down here, you're looking for something that says UK. So it's for often UK Access Management Federation or UK Higher Education. When I look down, I've got UK Access Management Federation here. It'll then ask me to choose my university. So these don't seem to be in any order. So I'm just looking down the list, looking for University of Hull. And clicking on that. And it's now let me in. As you can see up here now I've got the University of Hull logo and I've got an option to download the PDF. So that's let me in without having to pay for it. I can click on the PDF link and download the article. Okay from here I've got an option to download it onto a memory stick or onto my desktop and I can read the full article from there. Okay, I'm just going to close this down. I'm going to go back to my results. I'm now going to look at this result here, competence and satisfaction in occupation and performance. Again, we've got the same options, more information are available online. So I'm just going to tick uh, choose available online. This doesn't take us straight through to the article this time. I've got this intermediate page which tells me that full text is available from the following databases and then I've got a link to Sage Premier. So I'm just going to click on here. Okay, as you can see once again I don't have a University of Hull logo at the moment and it looks like they're asking me to buy it or um, access it in another way. So just because we've logged into Science Direct doesn't mean that we'll get into every journal article. Unfortunately you have to do this for different providers. So I'm going to click access options. I'm given a few here again putting your details into my account won't work but we've got the institutional access again and as well as Open Athens we've got this word shibboleth uh, and this is what the University of Hull uses, Shibboleth Access. So I'm going to click on Shibboleth. And again, you get the same sort of page as we got before. It's asking me to select a region or group. So I'm going to look for the UK one. And we're down here at the bottom, United Kingdom, UK Federation. So slightly different wording from last time. And then I'm going to look for the University of Hull. It's in a bit better. This is in alphabetical order at least this tab. Okay and click on the University of Hull. And as you can see I've now got a University of Hull logo at the top and I can download the PDF. My subject lib guide. So we've looked at some and now I'm going to look at some of the databases. So as you scroll down the page you'll see you have different boxes on your page. You have finding journal articles in your subject area. So these are education specific resources and some useful journal databases. These are multidisciplinary, meaning that they, they cover a lot of um, subject areas, but they will do a more focused search than some and will. So the first one of these that I'm going to look at today is Academic Search Premier, and this comes via EBSCO. EBSCO also deliver different subject um, databases such as Education Research Complete, Business Source Premier, uh, CINAHL for the nursing students etc. So it's a really useful one to use. This time instead of being prompted to log in when I found a journal article I want to look at it's asking me to log in at the beginning of the session. So again you've got select your region or group. I'm going to click on there and go down to UK. UK Higher Education. It's then asking me to log in with my university. So I'm looking for University of Hull again. I'm clicking on that. And then it's taken me in. Sometimes you'll get prompted for your university username and password as well. And if you are, just pop that in. 
So I'm going to do my search again. And as you can see, we've got three boxes this time. So a bit more focus search than we had last time. I'm going to put my time management in again. And I'm using the double quotation mark so that it looks for those two words together. My next bit is my university. So I've got my university with my asterisk. So it looks for university or universities. And I'm also going to put in higher education. And again, I'm doing it with phrase searching. So it looks for those two words next to each other. The more alternative terms you put in, the more results you're going to get. I'm then going to put student with my asterisk or maybe undergrad or graduate. So thinking of synonyms, different words that can describe what it is you're looking for will broaden your search out. I'm going to click search. Okay. Again, just like summon, there are some um, limits on the left hand side that you can pop on. So again, you've got a date range limit. You can either type in the box or use the slidey rule to change your years. So I'm just going to type in the box. So that's changed it to just articles that have been written in the last 10 years. I'm going to choose academic journals because I just want results from academic journals. And I'm going to just change my language and put just English. Okay, so you can see already I've got a much more manageable set of results using one of the subject databases. I've only got 734. We had 1,600 in summer. And I'm just going to scroll down and I'm going to look at uh, number seven in, any, in the Anytime. So you can see some of them have a PDF full text link and some of the articles have this Find at Hull link. So I'm just going to click on Find at Hull. And again, we've got that interim page that we got before where it tells us that full text is available from the following databases. So I'm just going to click on Sage Premier again and hopefully it should log us straight in this time because we've already looked at something from Sage when we were using Summon. You can see we've got the University of Hull up here and we've got our download PDF option here. So that's taking us straight into that one. Okay. So I'm then going to look at number four, the effects of time management on academic performance. So again, we've got a find at whole button. I'm just going to click on here. And this time it's not giving me a link to the article. We've got a few options. Could search the title in the library catalogue. We could look at the e-journals, A to Z list. If we really can't find the item, you can request it via the library's interlearn service. Um, so you get so many free interlibrary loans a year, depending on your level of study. Undergraduates get six a year. And if you click on this link, it takes you to log in and then you can request that article if it's something that you really want to find. Sometimes it is worth just copying the title. and putting it into Google and seeing what comes back. So this has brought back the article, The Effect of Time Management on Academic Performance. However, when you do this, you're not really sure you're getting a legal authorised copy of the article. It could be an e illegal uprint. You can get a little button that you can put in your toolbar that will tell you if there, were, there is a legal version of it. If I click that button, it's automatically given me a copyright version of that. It's from an open access journal. So it's given me a, a, an allowed version. I'll show you how to put this little button into your toolbar at the end of this video. Okay. So that's what to do if you find something that we don't have access to. Okay, I'm just going to go back to my LibGuide. And I'm going to show you one more database. I'm going to show you Web of Science. Again, Web of Science is a multidisciplinary database, but it is stronger in the sciences. And you can see as soon as we've got to this page, it's a bit like the EBSCO database. It's asked us to sign in. 
So again, we'll go select institution. We're looking for UK. We've got UK Federation. And then it's asking me to type the name of my organisation in. And I'm just going to select it and continue. Okay, and this time it's just signed me in. So this looks very like the EBSCO, the Academic Search Premier database we've just looked at. You can add rows if you want to. I'm just going to put my search in. Again, so I've got time management with their education. And then in my final box, student or undergrad or graduate. You can put your time limit on here as well. You can do a custom range. I'm just going to do the last five years this time. And in Web of Science as well, if you click on more settings, it will show you the databases it covers. So it is stronger in the sciences. And um, there are a couple of databases that just look for conference proceedings. So you can untick those if you want to. And then I'm going to search. OK, we've only got 113 results for this one. And again, you can see that you've got the full text from publisher or the find at whole button. Again, we can just limit to just journal articles if you want to. Okay, you can see you're given full text from publisher and you can just click on there and go straight through where you can download the PDF if you want to. There is a download citation option and you can choose whether you want to put it. So if you're using Renno or RefWorks, you can send them into your bibliographic software from there. I'm just going to skip back to the library homepage. So we do have some advice at the moment um, of how to get information that you can't find. So I'm just going to click here, it's coronavirus update, available library services. If I just click on there, there is a section about what to do if you can't find the information you're looking for. So you can see down here at the bottom, there's a can't find it option. I'm just going to click on there. And it'll tell you what you can do if you can't find some information that you want. So suggest an ebook purchase or find an open access version. So that's what we did with the one from Academic Source Premier. We looked for an open access version. So if you just click on this link here, it will give you some more information about how to put that little button in your toolbar so that you can find open access versions of journal articles that you're allowed to look at. So if you just scroll down here, this is the one that I've used, open access button. And if you click on it, it'll just let you download that into your toolbar to make it easier to find information.